Hello and welcome to part two of my hand tool series. Part two is on Allen wrenches. What are Allen wrenches? Allen wrenches are a tool used for socket head screws, cap screws, um, or set screws. And they look like this. Usually they're an L shaped tool that has six sides on it that goes inside the head of whatever fastener you're trying to tighten or loosen. Um, like I said, this is what they usually look like. They usually come in a set, um, a little holder like this. This is a real common arrangement. Um, these happen to be metric. They come in metric and standard. Um, the other options for Allens are to have a driver with an Allen bit that goes in the end of it. And I think this is a quarter inch. So this would come in all different sizes. Um, this is quarter inches would be an SAE. Um, like in my wrench segment, um, there's SAE or standard and metric sizes. And they're the same sizes like um, 5 8 and 7 16 and all those. All those fractional numbers that you see on wrench sets are the same sizes that you're going to see on Allen's. And same with metric. Um, they all go by millimeter. So this is your other option is to have an Allen on a socket. So you can attach a socket wrench to this and you can turn it that way. Um, but by far, this is the most common. This is usually what you're going to see. There's also T-handles. I'll put a picture of that in the video. T-handle Allen wrenches, which are really nice to have. Um, usually they're they're longer than standard and they have a cross on the top that you can grab by hand and, and turn like that with one hand. Um, so the ends of these are either going to be square or they're going to be a ball end. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, and these are not torques. They're not torques or triple square are two other, um, triple square isn't that common. Um, I had triple square, um, head bolts on the head of an old Volkswagen, not that old, maybe 2000 model here, Volkswagen. Um, all the head bolts on that were something called triple square that kind of looks like a cross between a Torx and an Allen. Um, I'll put a picture of what those look like. And then Torx are real common. A lot of fasteners on vehicles use Torx. Um, this, these are Allen's though. These are separate. This is a different type of bit. Um, and it's easy to get them mixed up. And also if you have a Torx piece of hardware that you need to get off, you can usually find an Allen wrench that you can fit in there and hold it at just the right angle and take it off. You shouldn't do that, but I mean, they're close enough and Torx usually come in keys like this too. Um, so it's easy, easy to get them mixed up. Um, but we're just talking about Allen's which have a hex shape on them. Um, the same shape as uh, like a standard bolt head would be. Um, so these are used for socket head cap screws, um, button head socket button cap screws, um, set screws. I'll put pictures of all these fasteners in the video of what these are usually used for. Um, machine screws. So when you hear the word machine screw, um, if you're not that familiar with hardware, you hear screw and you think something that's tapered like a wood screw or a sheet metal screw. Um, I'll put pictures of those up. So a machine screw is the same thread as like a bolt would be. Um, it doesn't taper and the thread stays the same. It goes by TPI threads per inch. So you would have like a quarter 20 machine screw. Um, it would, it's not like what you would normally think of as a screw. If, you, if you're not familiar with machine screws, um, the difference between a machine screw and a bolt is usually that a machine screw goes into a threaded hole on a piece of equipment and a bolt has a nut on the other end of it. That's basically the only difference. Like the, the thread and the sizes are all the same on a machine screw as it would be on a bolt. It's just, is it going, is it threading into a piece of equipment or does it have a nut on the back of it? Um, that's pretty much the only difference. Um, so Allen sockets are usually used for machine screws. Usually you don't have an Allen with a nut on the other end of it that you have to hold and then tighten. Um, usually if you're using an Allen, it's, it's going into a piece of equipment. It's not going to have a nut on the other side in, in general. It's a very broad generalization. Um, so the next part I'd like to discuss is what these are not used for. Um, they're not used for prying. Um, they're not used for putting a cheater bar on. So if you're trying to break something loose and it's not coming loose, um, you could put a piece of pipe over the end of this so you get more leverage. Um, that's what you're not going to do. Uh, we, 
We don't do that. Because <laughs> usually these bend and not break, but I've also seen these break before too. Um, so they build up a lot of tension, and then when they break, they snap, and you don't know where the sh you know sharp shard of metal is going to fly off to. Um, you should have safety glasses on anyway, but uh, you know it's not it's not safe, and you don't want to ruin your tools. And if you're putting that much torque on a fastener, there's a good chance you're going to break the fastener too. So I mean, there's really no no good outcome. Well, the good outcome would be you would get the piece of hardware out that was stuck, but there's you know a dozen bad outcomes and one possible good outcome. So we're not going to add anything to the end of this wrench. Um, um, don't use it as a chisel. So if you're trying to break something or get something out, you can hold it like that and hit hit the end of it with another tool or a hammer. That's we don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing people do is put the box end of a of a combination wrench over the end of it for leverage, but we don't want to do that. Um, these things break pretty easily. Um, I'll, uh, I'll grab one that I have that's broken. Okay, so here's one. I'm not sure how well that'll come up. Um, so it's twisted and it's been out square. And I just did this with my bare hand. I, I had it in a fastener that was stuck and I was twisting it as hard as I could. And the wrench, the entire wrench twisted and got out of square. Um, this is the finish that usually comes with a wrench that um, is included with something that you need to assemble yourself, like if you buy a desk or something. Um, something that comes unassembled in a box, you open it up and it has all the hardware with it. It'll come with like a little cheap Allen wrench like this mm -hmm. usually. Um, and usually they call it a hex key. So uh, a hex key, an Allen key, an Allen wrench, all those are the same thing. Hex key, obviously, because it's a hex shape. And I guess the reason they would call it a key is because it goes into the socket of the fastener. Um, I, I call it an Allen wrench or an Allen. Um, so what sizes are these? These are SAE and metric, just like wrenches. Um, except obviously they're, they're usually smaller. So like 7 16 and 9 16 are really common combination wrenches. Um, 7 16 and 9 16 Allens aren't that common. Usually they're smaller because they're, they go on the inside of the head of the fastener. Um, so SAE metric, um, like with wrenches, if you don't have good engagement and it's not fitting right, it's probably the other one. So if you're using a standard sized Allen key, um, and it's a little bit sloppy, it's probably a metric. Um, same thing as with wrenches. So the sizes are marked on the long end and they're really hard to read, especially on the smaller ones. Let me grab an example. So the sizes of Allen wrenches are marked on the long end. So it's stamped right there most of the time. Um, the only exception is if you have an Allen wrench, like I have a, a huge assortment of random Allen wrenches, and a lot of them came with um, stuff that I bought that needed assembled. And a lot of those don't have any marking whatsoever on them. You have no idea what size they are um, unless you measure them. But if you buy a set, and this is the most common type of set that you would ha have, um, they're printed right here on the long end. But once you get down to the smaller sizes, it's pretty much impossible to read what's on there. It's not just because I'm old. Even when I was younger, I couldn't. <laughs> it's like really, really tiny writing on there. Um, I guess you could maybe take a picture with your phone and blow it up to look at it. But I mean, when you're working on something that's real dirty and messy or in some kind of environment where you shouldn't have your phone out to begin with, um, that's not really convenient. The, the best way um, to figure out what size you have is to use the holder that it came with. So say I had this wrench and I didn't know what size it was. I would just put it in all the different holes until I found the one that it fit right in. And then I would look at what the marking was. So that one is 2.5 millimeters. Um, so just like combination wrenches, there are half sizes for the millimeters. This one has a, a 1.5 and a 2.5 millimeter. All the other ones are a whole number of millimeters up to 10 millimeter. So there is no, uh, no one. So it goes 1.5 to 10 on this set. And a standard set um, would be SAE numbers. So it would go from like a 16th all the way up to like three eighths or a half inch up top. Um, let me see. They also get longer, just like regular wrenches. I guess you can see here. Um, see how the smaller size is shorter and the bigger size you have, the longer 
this length is. I guess both lengths are longer. So if you're out working on something and you have, you know, a four millimeter and a four and a half millimeter and you can't read them because they're so small, whichever one is shorter is the four and the one that's longer is the four and a half. And as I mentioned about the 10 millimeter, um, when I was talking about combination wrenches, there's one or two sizes that, that are really, really common that you're going to use all the time. And then there's a whole bunch of other sizes that you'll pretty much never use. So 99% of the time when you have a set of Allen keys that you've had for a long time, there's going to be like one missing and it's the one that's the most common size. So these are so old that I can't even read what the sizes are. Um, on the set, but this one is missing. So most of the time when I need an Allen wrench and I go grab this set, that's the size that I need. That's, 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 that's how it works. That's why the one that's missing is, um, the most common cause you use it all the time. So you could have bent it or broke it or lost it or whatever. Um, and then almost all the other sizes don't get much use at all. Same with metric. So my four millimeter in this set is gone. Um, <laughs> That's pretty common to be missing the one that you need, um, which is a pain, but I guess, uh, the other benefit is if you go to work on something and you take that wrench out, chances are all the pieces of hardware that you're going to use are all going to use that same, same wrench. So you don't have to go back and get a bunch of different wrenches. So I guess that would be one benefit. I mentioned earlier that we've been talking about, um, ball end versus square end. So this is a ball end Allen wrench. And this is a, a square. Um, the advantage of this, I'll put some more pictures in the video, is that you can go in to the, say this is your piece of hardware, you can go in at an angle and turn it. So if this is really hard to get to, you don't have to go in square. You don't need to have, you know, eight inches of free room in front of it to be able to get into it. It could be behind something that's right here and you would just go up at an angle like that and turn it. Um, this Allen wrench, you need to be perfectly square in the end of the head of the bolt. So whatever type of bolt you're trying to use, if you're using this end of the Allen wrench to turn it, um, you need to have, you know, seven inches of open space in front of that piece of hardware to be able to get this Allen wrench in it. Um, ball end, you don't. The problems with ball ends are that they break off. Um, this is a pretty big wrench just so it's easier for you to see on the video, but I mean, one and a half millimeter ball end, um, the part behind the ball has to be, you know, less material than one and a half millimeters, probably like one millimeter thick back there. So if you put any kind of serious, uh, torque on that thing, it's going to break the ball off. Um, the other thing that they do is the balls get rounded real easy because there's hardly any engagement. It's only right at the widest part of the ball is the only part that's grabbing the, the inside of that socket. Um, so there's not a lot of engagement. It's really easy to strip the ball out on your tool, you put a lot of torque on it. And it's also really easy to strip out the fastener, the socket that you're putting it in, um, with the ball in. So as a last resort, if you can't get to a piece of hardware with the square end, so I don't know if I mentioned, but you can use either end of these. Um, it, it doesn't need to be used like this. It can be used this way if it's easier. Um, but like I said, don't put some big long pipe on the end of this to turn it. It's really hard to turn a fastener when you put it in like this and you only have a little bit of leverage. Um, so people always want to grab this with pliers or something to turn it, but you shouldn't do that. You'll ruin your wrenches. Um, so the other thing that we discussed is how these are not Torx. So conveniently Torx wrenches come in the exact same shape and you can see that's different. So it's really easy to confuse them or to have a Torx fastener or an Allen fastener and try to use the opposite type of wrench if you don't look close, especially if it's really small, if it's like a two millimeter um, socket head cap screw and you're, and it's black anodized and you're in a dimly lit area, it's real hard to tell if it's a Torx or an Allen. Um, so you might have to try metric and standard and Torx to see which one gets the best engagement, which one fits the best. Hex key L wrenches are designed to turn screws and bolts that would otherwise be difficult to reach. They have a ball shaped hexagonal head that fits neatly into the sockets of threaded fasteners to tighten or unscrew them. The long arm of these L shaped wrenches also extends the user's reach into tight spots. 
Hex key L wrenches often come in sets to provide a tool to suit almost any size of socket. Production starts with four meter long steel bars formed to a hexagonal profile. A short piece is first tested to confirm the steel is suitably hard yet elastic. A diamond tip tool presses an indentation into another piece. The depth it reaches is another measure of the steel's hardness. If the steel passes all the tests, the four metre long bars are cut into smaller lengths using a die cutter with a hexagonal profile to prevent any distortion of the shape. Each steel piece is then shaped in a lathe where a computerised tool contours the end. This is the steel before and after contouring. Another computer-controlled lathe then creates a spherical shape in the end of the piece that retains the hexagonal angles. An automatic loader transfers the steel pieces to a spiralled copper heating element. The element heats a specific spot on the piece to 600 degrees Celsius to soften it. A mechanised tool then bends the steel at this softened point to give it an L-shape. The hex key L-wrenches are beginning to take shape. The next step is to heat treat the wrenches to make the steel even harder. The parts are first fired in a furnace before being quenched in oil and then heated in a second furnace at a slightly lower temperature. The heat treatment strengthens the steel but leaves a residue. A wash followed by sandblasting cleans them up but doesn't remove the tarnished look. So to tackle this, the pieces are placed in a vibrating machine with ceramic stones and polishing solution. This cleans and brightens the steel. A magnetic conveyor extracts the wrenches from the mix and transfers them to a revolving drum. Here they bounce around with grains of corn, which absorb any residual moisture from the polishing process. The finish may be gleaming, but the wrenches are not yet complete. Held on racks, they're now dipped into separate nickel and chrome baths. The rack delivers an electrical charge to the parts, which attracts the nickel and chrome. The metals coat the wrenches for a shiny, rust-proof finish. Next, a device spins each wrench in front of a sensor. The sensor detects whether the wrench's long arm is perfectly straight. If necessary, the steel can be straightened until it makes the grade. The wrenches are now ready for a spray of powder coat. This will provide a durable finish, while the color will indicate the wrench's size. After powder coating, a robot transfers the wrenches to a printing station. A mechanised tool aligns the wrenches before another robot takes over. This places each wrench under a printing pad, which stamps on brand information and a serial number. The robot then retrieves the wrench and places it on a conveyor. Some of the finished wrenches are randomly tested to check their size. If the ends correctly fit the holes of a gauge, the production run is approved. The plastic holders for the wrenches are then constructed. This machine melts and moulds plastic under pressure to produce them in seconds. Once removed from the machine, they're deposited in a bin. Two of the holders are then placed under a laser. Once the protective shield has been lowered, the laser etches company information onto the plastic. The colour-coded wrenches can now be inserted into the correct slots in the holders. And that completes this set of hex key L wrenches, a useful and sometimes indispensable tool. You could say they're key to doing a decent job.